Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure that you would all far prefer to be in a large room with a table to one side with some very cool drinks waiting on it uh, for you to have at the end of this meeting uh, and the opportunity of chatting and getting to know your fellow members and indeed your associate members. But that's a distant dream. We'll get there one day. Don't worry too much about it. I am absolutely delighted to have been asked to speak to you this afternoon, this the inaugural annual general meeting of the Association of Interpreters and Translators. Um, as a judge, I spend my days listening to people talking, and if there's one thing I admire above all else, it's brevity, and therefore I can promise you that I'm going to be brief in this address to you now. I've been very fortunate. Although I had nothing at all to do with the conception of this association, I was fortunate to see the gestation from idea to reality, and I was even present at the birth to the extent that I was asked to give some minor assistance uh, in respect of the formation formalities. And I can tell you from my first-hand experience just how hard the officers and directors of your association have worked to get it up and running to this point. The essential aims and objectives of your association are entirely laudable. They are to preserve the integrity of your profession through the maintenance of standards and the protection of title. As a judge, I know just how important your profession is to the judicial system in this country. If a hearing involves a non-English speaker, we expect to see a qualified and competent interpreter in attendance to assist with communication. There have regrettably been occasions when that hasn't worked and the interpreter at court has been less than competent and that, as you will know, causes immense difficulties and problems, as well as adding to the burden of stress experienced either by a defendant, if it's the defendant who needs assistance, or a witness. Ensuring professional standards and ensuring protection of title will, I have no doubt, remove problems such as that. But of course, uh, your work extends far beyond the courts and the judicial system into the worlds of commerce and finance, education and healthcare. All of these rely on reliable and effective communication. And again, here, the work of translators and interpreters is absolutely vital. Even though we have left the European Union, we now have very many people who came to this country from European countries, uh, particularly to the East, and many of them have settled here and will stay here. Those who were first generation coming to this country tend not to be particularly good English speakers. The younger ones have picked up the language very well. So there is an enormous demand for your services there still. But this country is, of course, looking to expand its trading relationships and partnerships with countries around the world. So there will be a continued need and demand for your services. Just as the City of London is considered to be a centre of excellence for commerce and finance, and the English and Welsh justice system is considered to be a beacon of fairness, for the purpose of contract law, being able to ensure that people can communicate with these bodies is, again, absolutely vital, and that's where you come in. So, you firstly need to feel justifiably proud of your profession and yourselves. You are enormously important to us all. Secondly, you need to make your contribution to this association. You need to ensure that those that you introduce the association will share the objectives and aims that you have. 
it is only by ensuring that standards are maintained and that people are properly trained and properly prepared that you will maintain the respect that your profession deserves. I look forward very much to working with interpreters in the future. I have enjoyed working with interpreters in the past. I am grateful for the help and indeed kindness that has been demonstrated by interpreters. I see Olympia Dragu, who I think is your honorary secretary here. I first met Olympia about, oh gosh, um, seven years ago now, I think it was, when I was sitting at Harrow Crown Court and Olympia uh, was assisting defendants in a particular trial. And because we had quite a lot of Romanian um, witnesses and defendants appearing at that court, I got to see Olympia over a period of time. And on one occasion during a hiatus in the proceedings, Olympia was sitting in the public gallery and I remained on the bench and we started to, to have a conversation. And in the course of that conversation, I happened to mention that I was having difficulties in understanding some documents in Spanish relating to a boat that I kept in Spain at the time. And Olympia surprised me by saying, well, I speak Spanish, I'm entirely fluent. Can I help you with your documents? And that was the start of a wonderful working relationship and is probably what has led me to being here talking to you this afternoon. So there you are. There's an example of flexibility and a willingness to help where help is needed. So well done on starting this association. Well done on wanting it to succeed and to maintain the important standards you have. And I honestly and frankly wish you every success for the future and hope that your association goes from strength to strength. And finally, I very much look forward to that glass of cold wine with you on some occasion in the future. Thank you very much.